Hello. In the last video, video number five, I solved question number nine from the online SOA sample exam problems for exam P on probability, and I introduced the very important idea of conditional probability. In this video, number six, we continue with conditional probability, but we're going to go backwards as far as the question numbers. I'm going to go back to question number six. In video five, I used the conditional probability to help me solve for a regular probability. But here you can see in this problem, we're actually solving for a conditional probability with a Venn diagram again. And I verbally viewed the conditional probability from two different perspectives in the last video. But here in this video, I want to be a bit more explicit about writing down the relationship. I want to view the solution from two related perspectives, two different formulas that are related to each other. So it's question number six again. A public health researcher examines the medical records of a group of 937 men who died in the year 1999, discovers that 210 of those men died from causes related to heart disease. Moreover, 312 of the 937 men had a genetic link, at least one parent who suffered from heart disease. It doesn't say the parent or two parents died from heart disease, but they had heart disease. They suffered from it. Of these 312 men, 102, a higher percentage than overall, died from causes related to heart disease. That should make sense. If there was a genetic link, there should be a higher chance that they're going to die from heart disease. Our goal is to calculate the probability that a man randomly selected from this group died of causes related to heart disease, given that there is your key phrase that tells you you want to compute a conditional probability. You don't see the word conditional in this problem statement at all. So you need to look for phrases like that, given that, or if it is known that, or if you assume that. In this case, given that neither of his parents suffered from heart disease, that would be the opposite event of having at least one parent suffer from heart disease. Again, we aren't worried about whether they died or not from heart disease, the parent. So once again, we draw a Venn diagram. So you imagine um, the box representing all 937 men. We've got one circle representing those who died from heart disease. And there would be 210 of the men in there. And another circle. Um, again, all these men died in 1999, so those outside of the red circle still died, just not from heart disease. And the green circle here that I'm drawing is going to represent those who had a genetic link, at least one parent suffering from heart disease. I don't want to call it P because I want to reserve P for probability. I could call it PAR, say, for parent. Okay, it's okay to use more than one letter. I suppose I could also call it G for having a genetic link or something like that. And we want to fill in numbers in these four different regions to help us solve the problem now. But, you know, whereas before I've typically filled in uh, the numbers to be probabilities, whether they're actual numbers or whether they are variables representing probabilities, representing numbers, I typically have thought of them as being probabilities, is what I'm trying to say. And it seems more natural in this problem to label them with actual numbers of men in this case. Okay, take it step by step. There's 210 men in here from that 210 there. 312 men in here from the 312 there. And of those 312, of the 312 men that are in the green circle, 102 died from heart disease. So put 102 in the intersection here. Okay, those would be the, of the 930, 937 men, those would be the men that both died from causes related to heart disease and had a genetic link. Once you know that number, you can fill in these other numbers. Again, it's 312 men in here total. So in this crescent shape, it would be 312 minus 102, that'd be 210. Those would be the people, the men, that had a genetic link but died from something other than causes related to heart disease. And then for this crescent, you've got 210 men over there total in the red circle, 102 in here, so over here, you'd have 210 minus 102. That would be 108. And then outside of both circles, dying from something other than causes related to heart disease and not having a genetic link to heart disease, 
you'd have um, 937 minus the sum of these three things, minus 108 plus 102 plus 210. 937 minus 420, which is 517. Okay. Now, to get the answer to the question, you can just very quickly think intuitively. The answer, think about it here, it is given that neither parent suffered from heart disease, you're outside the green circle. You're one of these two groups. How many men are in that group? 108 plus 517, 625. How many of them died from heart disease? The 108. This is going to be the answer. That's the ratio of the number in this red crescent here divided by the total that are outside the green circle, the sum of these two numbers. That should make intuitive sense. So 108 divided by 625. If you get your calculator out and approximate this to three places after the decimal, you'll get 0.173, which is one of the answer options. It's option B, and that is the correct answer for the online sample problems, number six. Okay, so solve it pretty quickly that way. As always, now let's take a step back for the purposes of the future and introduce some notation and new ideas, and then at the end I'll be Make, uh, you look at Mathematica again. So I'm not going to make an animation this time, but we'll look at a picture and think about areas as representing relative probabilities. All right. So what's the new notation that I want to introduce? Again, I didn't use probabilities here. I used numbers of men. In general, you might let, say, n of a, and consistent with probability notation, I'm using square brackets. I could use parentheses. Either way is okay. In general, for an arbitrary event A, be the number of outcomes, in this case men, who died in 1999 here, in an arbitrary event or, or subset A. Number of outcomes in A. And based on that notation, and also based on the conditional probability notation that I introduced in video 5, we can write the answer this way. The probability of what? of a man dying from heart disease, given that, draw a vertical line, neither parent suffered from heart disease, you're outside of the green circle, you're in the complement of par, which I denote by par prime, some people denote by par C, C for complement. That is the conditional probability that you're after. This vertical line again means given that, And the whole symbol here, the probability P, the square brackets, and inside being one event given another, that whole thing is called a conditional probability. What about these numbers here, using the end notation? 108 is the number in this crescent. That's H intersect par prime. That's the number of elements in H intersect par prime. The same number, 108, appears as one of the summands in the bottom, N of H intersect par prime. The 517, though, is outside of both H and par. It's in H prime intersect par prime. Okay, so that's a symbolic way of representing what I did. Another way to write this is to change the bottom to realize that that sum, kind of like the special addition rule for disjoint events, mutually exclusive events, is also the number of men that are outside of par prime. That's the same as n of par prime. These two events here and here are disjoint. It's the 108 and the 517. There's no overlap between those mutually exclusive events. The, and their, their union is this set. So this number, just like its probability, could be represented as a sum of the no number or probability from the pieces. Okay, so that's 
one way to write this, and what we can say is in general, at least if we are able to enumerate the number of elements in these different sets, and technically speaking if we assume all outcomes are equally likely, which is not always the case, in general we can write the conditional probability of A given B, in this kind of situation at least, this is the ratio of the number of elements in the intersection divided by the number of elements in what's given. Power prime was the given thing, it comes after the vertical line. Here B comes after the vertical line. I could write it this way. Again with a caveat that we're assuming all, all outcomes are equally likely um, and we can actually find these numbers. It's not always possible. Then you could write this formula. Um, and also as long as B is not empty. But there's another way to write this, a second perspective. Remember, we're going to look at this from two related perspectives. There's a second way to look at this that works as long as you're not dividing by zero, even if you can't enumerate how many people or outcomes are in different events, even if they are infinite numbers, um, in a sense. You can also say this equals, let's use a green marker here, the probability of A intersect B divided by the probability of B as long as the probability of B is non-zero. Okay, as long as we're not divided by a zero. Does that work here? Yes, it does. How, how would it play out here? Well, each of these numbers would effectively be divided by the size of the entire sample space, which is 937. I could think of this as being 108 divided by 937 divided by, well, 108 over 937 plus 517 over 937, which could also be thought of as 625 over 937. And of course, those 937s are going to cancel, leaving you with 108 divided by 625 same answer as before. But this way of thinking about it makes the connection with this way of thinking about it. So those are the two different perspectives that I'm talking about. Okay, But this connection here is the more general one that works all the time as long as you're not dividing by zero. Let's end with Mathematica. And again this time we're just going to make a static diagram. But once again emphasizing that if you think about probabilities in terms of relative areas it can be useful. Now I'm not labeling these things with probabilities, I'm labeling them using the end notation, but you can still think about these in terms of probabilities ultimately. What is So I, I am labeling the different areas, so the red here represents H, those are the men who died of causes related to heart disease. The blue represents PAR, those who had a genetic link, at least one parent suffered from heart disease. Uh, the intersection is between the red and the blue lines here. There's 102 people in there who both died from heart disease and had a genetic link. Um, and we can find, for example, the number that were outside of both of them. That's over here. That's the 517. And again, the answer to the question was the 108 divided by 108 plus 517. So this 108 here that you see in orange is referring to this section in here that's in red in the H but not in PAR. And we're taking that, essentially the probability that we're after is the ratio of the area of this thin rectangle compared to the area of this whole rectangle here that starts over here at this black line and ends over here at this blue line. The relative area of this to this. Okay, so there's a way to think about it in terms of areas. Thanks for watching.